Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. Any second now, this geyser is going to blow. Oh! Yeah, so have you heard? Boaz is in Iceland. <laughs> yeah, in fact, today <laughs> is his last day. We're, we're hoping. So we're making him come back right. uh, because he's looking a little too comfortable over there. I know. He's enjoying yeah. himself, but we're enjoying watching all of it. He flew over on Iceland Air's yeah. first direct flight from Pittsburgh. He's going to join us one last time live coming up. We'll talk to him about the geyser and all sorts of other things. He too. looks like he's having the time of his life. Yeah. I, yeah. I know. I, I, he is having so the time fun. of his life. All right. It is Tuesday. Mikey is joining us again today and Tuesday's always a great day to be here Mike. I would totally agree with you uh, David because it's, it's Tasted Tuesday and this Tasted Tuesday is very special to me because we, I'm we excited about this. this. Yeah. yeah so Pittsburgh's first Shake Shack opened yesterday in the strip so we're trying some of their famous Shack burgers. Yes. And so it's a thin patty. There's a trademark sauce mm -hmm. and then crinkled fries because you got to do the crinkled fries. So this is some video from yesterday at the terminal building. It's opened in the strip. Uh, they had the grand opening. Turns out the CEO, the new CEO. Yeah is from Bethel Park. Mm -hmm. So no wonder we're getting a Shake Shack in Pittsburgh it now. It makes sense. I yeah. mean, we should have one in every corner by the end of the year. Well, they <laughs> are planning one in East Liberty, too, is that's the word on the street. Yeah, OK, so. Yeah. So anyway, we have burgers, the Shake, the, the Shack burgers. Uh, they also apparently have a crispy cr chicken sandwich mm -hmm. that one I'm should sure try. I'm sure that's good. Should I just, yeah. I'm just going to go, go ahead. And I'm going to take a I'll really talk. big bite. OK, <laughs> you're ready to go. And, and so we're trying this out. They also have beer and wine at this location in the Strip, uh, which is, they don't have that at all their locations. This is so really good. So what are you thinking? They have to pair it with the french fry. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. You need the whole, the crinkle fries? That's delicious. They're good? Yes, very good. Very right. flavorful. I'm going to try it too. Ron, by the way, has a veggie ber version of this. And I don't know whether you've tried it yet, Ron, or not. I have not. I have not. Okay. Can I just say it's really cute, the little packaging mm -hmm. they have on there? Mm -hmm. I can't talk right now. Oh, I like the cheese. The cheese mm. and the, oh, the, mm -hmm. the, the sandwich is good too. Mm -hmm. Good taste. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. lot of people. Thumbs up? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's a little but early. Your, and your burger, burger, the veggie burger, apparently just it came is. out two weeks ago. Did it? Yeah. This is actually very flavorful. Well, yeah. they knew they were coming to Pittsburgh yeah. and they were like, Ron Smiley is going <laughs> to need something. <laughs> We, we must come on, it. team. Let's get this done. Yeah, a lot of people were comparing these to uh, Five Guys. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, just because they're the whole smash burger right, thing. Right. So I'm I taking guess, a second bite. Yeah, it's that's that's really good. I mean, I know it's good. It's not like I'm unsure whether it's good. Mm -hmm. I just want a second bite. And I think it's really cool because the founder of Shake Shack, they it originated in New York. Mm -hmm. From they started as a hot dog cart. So a really fascinating yeah. story, and, and now, now look at them. The yeah. I remember being in New York, and there was a line out the door mm -hmm. to get into the Shake Shack. I don't remember getting a burger, though. I think what I got a you shake. Get? You got, oh, yeah. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. We don't have a shake this morning. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> next, next time. Yeah, next time. <laughs> but no, people, they'll, they go, when they go to New York, they make Shake Shack one of their stops. Like, they put it in their itinerary. Yeah. That's how good it is. I was staying and I at a agree. hotel where it was in the... the bottom of the hotel that mm -hmm. very same building and yeah. I was watching that whole week <laughs> and like there was never not a line there how often did you go I only went once oh. but, but I kept looking <laughs> to see when, when the line wouldn't be there and uh -huh. there was always people like even late at night there's people standing in line in the Shake Shack oh but anyway I we got it. them in Pittsburgh now this is really good yeah it is good we're gonna keep <laughs> eating I hope you don't mind <laughs> but in the meantime we're also gonna talk about this mm. Do you ever stop being cool? Like at what age, mm. or maybe you feel a little out of touch when it comes to like pop culture and stuff like this. So there was a new survey done by Talker Research um, and they asked people like, when do you start to feel a little out of touch when it comes to like 
pop culture. Yeah, whether it's on the TikTok, of yeah. which I struggle with sometimes, but on the TikTok, that's how you know if it's you call bad. It the TikTok, I think that means you might be out of touch. <laughs> and uh, it's like, do you keep up with Taylor Swift? Like all of this pop yeah. culture stuff. Like, how do you figure out when you've just you're completely out of touch. Well, apparently a lot of people think they're out of touch mm -hmm. because uh, they, they found that 49% of people think they're out of touch. Uh, and then they said that generally you start feeling out of touch at age 39. Okay. So Heather just turned 40, 40 which yeah. we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. So we should ask her when she comes back. Like, do <laughs> like, you instantly really now do. feel out of touch? Because like, what? But what do you think? Is there an age? I don't think there's really an age. No, I think 39 is a good point in time where you just, I, I like some of the younger people, they mention music and, you know, uh -huh. songs that are out. And I have no clue who they are talking about, like yeah. what the artist is. But I will say, I do try and make an attempt to keep up with some pop culture, but there's a lot that I miss. I mean, I'm still listening when it comes to music, like 90s R&B. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stuck well, see, in that, that. But I think that that's normal. Mode. I think that's so normal mm -hmm. where you have an era of music mm -hmm. that you most associate with. Right. And maybe you like new stuff and maybe you like even older stuff than that. But that's the period that like gets you going somehow. And it speaks does. To you. Yeah. And I don't know why that is, but I think it works like that. Do you still feel cool? I mean, I think you're really no. cool. No. But do you know? Well, you're, <laughs> you're sweet. But no, I think the thing that made me start to realize I'm not keeping up anymore. Wasn't there a show that was literally called Keeping up with the Kardashians. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I am not up. keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> like, they did it in for me. I was like, if this is what things are about now, I just don't care. Well, the fact that like, you that said, is... <laughs> was there a show? There, yeah, yeah. Because I did Everyone. not watch that show. <laughs> I was not into it, yeah. And and I'm having a little trouble with the TikTok. Yes, as you, yeah. You know, but I do like, I, I mean, I think we try to stay in touch because of what we do for a living, mm -hmm. too. So you kind of need to know what's going on in pop culture. But you know what's happening, like, on every single episode of The Golden Girls. Well, so yeah, that, so you're that doesn't kinda... count. That's, like, really old. That's bad. That's, That's my point. You know. <laughs> oh, but I, no, I, I no, see what I, your point is now. <laughs> But I think we all do that, though. We we associate ourselves with an era, and it's hard. It's hard to move forward because that's true. It's just uh, I, I, I don't know true. what it is, but yeah. it's okay. One it's in two Americans feel they're out of touch with what's cool today. Yeah, I don't. I'm proudly out of touch a little bit. Me too. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, not <laughs> badly out of touch, just a little bit. Not when it comes to the Kardashians. I'm yeah, no, no I, yeah. It's, I don't know who's who. I don't know anything. All right. <laughs> Love was in the air in Cleveland on Sunday, and we love this story. Yeah. Yeah. So Will, Will Lovner of Pittsburgh uh, won the Cleveland Marathon for the second year in a row. There he goes. But I uh, knew this year when he uh -huh. crossed the finish line, he made quite a memory. Someone handed him a ring. He got down on one knee and proposed to his girlfriend, Emma. And she said yes. Well, she better say yes. There's television cameras there and everybody's watching. Yeah. So, I mean, he had to have a good idea she was going to say yes. Mm -hmm. But I love this. It's what, I mean, it's just a wonderful moment. And it really, I, I, you know, and, and everybody that sees this, like when they witness something like this, you know, it just, it touches you it because you realize, oh, this is a big moment for them. It's just yeah. fun. It, it was, you know what, it was maybe like three weeks ago, someone got married right outside or got proposed to right outside the KDK studios. Really? And we were all watching out the window. I'm sure they didn't know that they had a crowd, but everyone in the newsroom. <laughs> It was really, like was peering it, out the window, looking at this it proposal. Was, and was someone like down on the, their knee and yeah, on the whole bit? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was pretty. It's how cool. to do it? Mm -hmm. I remember your proposal because we talked about it on TV, and Joran was so smooth. Yeah, it was. It was. So it was I, I was completely shocked. He proposed when we went to Niagara Falls. Yeah. Uh, we just. I just thought it was a, a vacation. We were just getting away really quickly. I had no idea that he was going to promote. To propose, and I mean, we we had talked about marriage, but I just it just wasn't it. I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. And I think we have and, pictures. Yeah. And it, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just it was it was so magical, and it, you know how wonderful Niagara Falls is, and by yeah. the water. And luckily, when someone took the uh, photo, someone took the photograph, and. Like, I'm so glad that they captured the moment. Right, it was just a random. No, we didn't. Like, it was just lined up. It was just a random. Uh, right, somehow, they, I don't think they have the photographs. I don't yeah. know what's going on. 
No, it's okay. Okay. It's fine. But right. it's, it, well, it wait was, a minute. <laughs> are you fine? I'm going to try to find it. I, you just keep talking. No. You keep but, talking about it. <laughs> but it was just something, and I remember just being excited the entire time we were up there. And I mean, I'm still excited now, but that was mm. just, just a really cool moment. Okay, <laughs> Why I can't, is Ron laughing I can't at get us? It. I can't get it. I'm trying to pull it up, and, you know, because I know you said it to us yesterday because I asked you for it. I was like, oh, 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 oh. well, here it is. Here yeah. it is. Okay, all right. All right. Is this here one, of your, is. one of your cool moments? I don't know moments. if we can zoom it in. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There they are. Right? This is by the Horseshoe Falls. And do you notice, like, the perfect 90-degree angle Joran is at right now? Like, his, his knee is, like, at a perfect – he he knew what to do. Yeah. And I, I don't even know what he said. I just was like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I love yeah. that. So. I love that. How about you? Well, oh, I, I, I proposed to Gary, and there are no pictures at all of that. No picture, but oh. I did arrange, like, we were in New York City, and we were at this hotel mm -hmm. that – uh, it was just a very special place to us. And Gary had been watching The Bachelor. So I didn't like, I didn't have an engagement ring for him, but I did have champagne waiting back in the room Ooh, and chocolate covered strawberries mm -hmm. and a rose. <gasps> and I said, would you accept this rose? And so. Were you crying? Like when no, you did, no fact, you, I was <laughs> nervous because we went out to see a show beforehand mm -hmm. and like one of his former students was talking to him after the show and talking and talking and talking. <laughs> like, and meanwhile, oh. I'm to the point, I'm staring daggers at this former student. Like, he has no idea. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, <laughs> champagne's getting warm. I had the, like, the folks at the hotel helping out yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And meanwhile, I'm thinking, this isn't even going to happen. So I'm like, I'm literally like, <laughs> he must Let's have go. thought, like, what is wrong with that guy? Uh, but then, you know, finally... Things how, broke up, and then we were able to go back. And how long did you practice what you were going to say? Oh, like, I were did, you pra you didn't. I didn't. You just winked. No, I well, I kind of. I mean, I just knew I was going to speak mm -hmm. from the heart. Oh, you know, and I knew I was going to say the the line about "Will you accept this rose?" Mm -hmm. And he did. Oh yeah, well yeah, just, happily ever after. Trust me, it, it didn't matter what you said. Just he knew what you were doing, and I'm sure he was going to say yes regardless. Yeah. Well. <laughs> It all worked it out. Did, that's what's did. good. And we and we say congratulations to the marathon winner, too, because mm -hmm. that's a great story. All right. We need your help for our What You Think Wednesday question. Tomorrow's Wednesday already. So here's the question. When is it okay to take over your grown-up child's room and change it to something new? Yeah, the Washington Post recently had an article giving advice on this um, and how to explain the takeover is what they're calling it to your child. So let us know what you think. Um, how long do you have to keep it filled with their stuff? Yeah. yeah. Or do you at all? Like as soon as they, like the first day they move out, <laughs> boom, out. this is my exercise room. <laughs> this is my art studio. This is my, you know, the study I always wanted, the library. Yeah, I and some know. people 20 years later still have their grown child's like stuff right. in their room. So for some people, it's like a shrine, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't know. We're going to get into it. Post your answers on Pittsburgh Today Live's Facebook page. We'll talk about it tomorrow. That's a fun one. Coming up today.